Hello, can you hear me and uh, see me? Or... Yeah, I can't see you yet, but I can hear you, which is a good oh, thing. Man. Okay, that's good. Um, that's weird. It says turn off camera and turn on camera, but it's not. Oh, if you're like using just if you're using OBS, um, are you using OBS to capture? No, no, I'm not. Okay, I'm just okay. using. Uh, mm, I wonder Some... if it's just. Yeah, sometimes yeah. it will just pull weird. I know that what I like what I just had to do. Sorry for being late, by the way. What I just had to do. Hey, oh my there God. you go. I can see you now. <laughs> it's because I can't. Uh, it just like wouldn't pick up the other webcam, and that one was covering it. So it's it's pretty much the same quality. So it's okay. All right. Let me just. Uh... Let me just see if I can. Here we go. All right, perfect. I'm going to get you up. I didn't realize it was like a physical, uh, it's just covering the camera. Oh, uh, no, it's just, this is how this stuff happens, and it's all good. There's always, whenever we, I swear to God, I do a lot of calls and stuff like that, live calls and whatever, and I swear every single time there's something new and unique that the, uh, the Discord or whatever has invented mm -hmm. for us to have an issue with um yeah no I, i'm okay. never on discord so oh that's, okay uh, so yeah i use yeah, discord all the time and you know to be completely honest um i i mean the the only i can't imagine a reason why other than it's the only thing i can think of that works so most of the time <laughs> no it seems way, it uh, seems like a good platform sorry uh, sorry i didn't mean to interrupt you there um do you mind if i uh, uh do you mind if i ask your pronouns oh yeah it's uh he him okay and just to be What's clear yours? Uh, oh, uh, she, her. I, I should have, I should have okay. said that right away. But um, yeah, just so, just so uh, we're a hundred percent clear. I am, I am currently live streaming with my audience. So just so you know, I assumed well, that that would right. be the assumption. But, but yeah, that's um, okay. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it was a bit of an awkward start. I apologize again about the about the delay there. I was like, oh my god, I started my stream as usual. I'm like, oh my god, I forgot to move the camera over so I can use it with Discord, because like. Oh my god, so silly. But anyway, uh, I've been really looking forward Good. to getting to sit down and talk with you uh, about everything. And um, yeah, uh, I guess uh, if you want to, I guess if we want to start this, I guess we'll do in, like formal introductions. Uh, if you'd like to go first, yeah, sure. uh, then then I'll go second. Um, okay, yeah, my name is Ben. Um, I'm Sisyphus55 on YouTube. I usually cover uh, like psychology, philosophy related topics. Um, Recently, I made a video on um, kind of online politics and the extent to which it has revolutionary potential. And it was a video specifically addressing the audience, although um, I think the way it was received by some streamers was uh, it was uh, they also felt like it was it was very much a critique of, of their own platform. Uh -huh. um, and I think that's how you um, uh, like discovered my channel i'm pretty sure so um yeah. and and yeah and i and i i really as i said in the email I, I really appreciated the the critique because i kind of and i think i mentioned it i made that video in a sort of kind of dialectical uh kind of uh, energy going into it where wow. it's like i wanted to offer what i thought about it but because i'm dealing with like a like a you know a, a platform where people can react and people can can engage in your content and they can provide criticisms. I was expecting some sort of uh, feedback. I wasn't sure what it was going to be like, but I was kind of in the hopes of like, this is what I think now. Mm -hmm. And then hopefully this can open me up to discuss uh, with other people that maybe have similar views, different views. Um, but, you know, we're all kind of, uh, you know, streamers, content creators at the end of the day and to hear their perspective. And then hopefully I can kind of refine my own uh view about the situation and you know maybe make like a follow-up and there's a few other people that i'm talking to awesome. um specifically about this so uh yeah that's my my introduction i guess well welcome and um i really appreciate this opportunity to sit down and talk and for you reaching out to talk with me that m means a lot to me i am of course demon mama uh and uh i'm a, a live streamer you can find me on youtube Demon Mama, um, really easy to find. YouTube.com forward slash C forward slash Demon Mama. <laughs> it's that easy. Um, and I watched your video. It was indeed the first time I came into contact with your channel. Um, and I thought it was a, like, there were things that, like, I 
I agreed with a good chunk of it and I disagreed with some of it as well. Um, and uh, so I made my little video about it. And um, I, at least for me, I always try to approach things uh, like kind of the way that you mentioned, like, you know, trying to engage in a dialogue or at least something productive of that. So at least for me, I found it was a, a, a very good jumping point to start talking about things. And of course, there were things I disagreed with, but I think that's natural. Um, but yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so people my, my chat saying, none of your videos are little, Demon Mama. I'm like, that's true. I don't, I'm long winded. I don't do little videos. It's true. It's true. But, but um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to talking about everything, the topics, the video, everything today. Um, and I'm glad that we get to sit down. Um, yeah, no, me too. So, yeah, so I guess. Um, there was so with the with regard to the to the obviously i went a little spicy i hope it didn't i hope it didn't like ruffle any feathers with my title i did kind of say that you blame the lack of oh, i mean on, that, it, on live streamers which I you think didn't it, exactly it, do yeah. but but it was there was a couple parts where i felt like it was like that but i i, I mm. try i get a little uh, i won't say i try to avoid doing any clickbait but i do try to be a little spicy and fun with my titles a little bit so i hope that didn't come off as me like insulting you or anything because i didn't think you were in need of any insults as hopefully my video showed um yeah so okay was there anything that stood out uh to you from my critique that you wanted to talk about right away because i did write about down a bunch of notes of stuff that we could talk about today but i I'd, I'd prefer since you reached out you can lead the lead the combo if you'd like okay um i mean i think with regards to uh kind of a constructive dialogue i'm actually very curious about sort of your own experience streaming in this space, um, kind of what you observe with, uh, you know, when people talk about infighting and, yeah. um, you know, stuff like that and your own kind of like feelings regarding that and your own sort of like what you feel needs to be addressed or kind of tackled on like online left politics and if you have okay. any sort of actionable steps and stuff like that. Um, but I guess, yeah, before that, I think there were two things in the critique where I was like, this is very i thought it was very useful and it did play into the fact that i was like as i was writing that paper or, or as i was writing the script i was like i'm limited by like the very limitations i'm talking about yeah about like with video essays because it has to be around 20 minutes at the very most it does kind of you can't really be super pretentious with with uh how you're going about things. It could have been a lot more pretentious, although I'm sure it already came across as extremely pretentious because that's just the format of a video essay. Um, but uh, I especially regretted my use, uh, kind of just like, kind of just going past, like without really defining what I was meaning by the term play. And then also by the term truth, because th those two were just so, it was very anti, like, philosophical and anti-intellectual to just kind of just just throw those in there really quickly and both of those were attached to, to very large sections of the original draft that i was like i i i'm just gonna i'm just gonna remove this and i'm gonna see how people take this and then i can maybe yeah. further clarify later on as long as it's not causing too much damage or confusion um but with play i i think i remember in your critique i thought that was a really interesting i think there was somebody else in the chat showed up and and you guys uh, yeah, talked about uh, that's my of... partner doe who um mm. is way more into the theory side of things than i am and uh and it's 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 really into that kind of stuff and it's read a ton and we had just been talking about recently about um some various philosophical perspectives on the, the sort of delineation between play and work and things like that so um yeah uh on on that okay so oh there's so much to talk about so with with the i guess i'll start with the first thing that you brought up which is talking about this space and infighting and all of that which is like a huge topic in and of itself um, there is a lot of, I mean, I've been streaming now in pol specifically in politics spaces for almost four years. Um, like in four months, it will be my four year anniversary of streaming. And it's been an, a very strange experience on a lot of fronts. Um, the infighting um, on the left broadly is very big. There's obviously huge divides between certain factions specifically, um, like like the the liberals who don't like being called leftists uh, is like a huge divide. And I mean, I'm okay with not calling them leftists, but also that mentality has seemed to have changed a lot over 
the last few years where now um there there's like this desire to belong in the left but not but to not but to like delineate themselves from extreme leftists and it's really weird and hard to navigate and i think sometimes like something that i talk about a lot is that like leftist unity is a like a thought terminating cliche in a lot of ways it is a thing that's designed to silence any sort of disagreement or productive conversation and that's not to say that i don't think that lefties of of different stripes need to sometimes need to work together but like working together can't be browbeaten in you have to just you have to like iron things out and come to disagreements and be able to talk through them um, and as my sort of platform has 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 sort of developed and changed over the years, I've I've made a big deal of of like uh, like I guess honing the way that I engage in things. Like first of all, like there's a lot of things that I would categorize as ju as mostly drama, where it's like interpersonal slap fights, where the things get very very interpersonal. And uh, I've moved further and further away from in from trying to engage in those because I feel like they just make me feel bad and they make everyone feel bad. Um, even though there's definitely some clicks to be had in that. Um, but also, when I do engage in things, I've made a really big deal of uh, trying to point out and get people to think about things like context collapse, um, things like uh, like actually having evidence for claims. There's a tendency uh, for people to kind of just go off the cuff and say things and have it be expected, and then it gets into the grapevine, and then nobody actually knows what actually happened. Um, I have a series on my channel called Drama Mama, which is ironically less about drama per se, but it, it kind of is. It's like uh, in the Drama Mama series, I focus on um, generally like pretty big things. Like, I mean, things I've talked about was like the allegations of racism at DC Comics um, and, or not DC Comics, DV, DC Movies. Um, I've talked about um, more recently the Miranda Sings situation where there were allegations of abuse uh, and I improper behavior, behavior with fans. And one of the things that I do in that series that I constantly repeat and reinforce to my audience is that we stick to the receipts. We don't jump into speculation. If we're going, if we're speculating on something, we need to be very clear about that so people don't run with it. Um, and we should avoid doing it altogether. We should stick with the evidence that's available. Uh, we should try to be as charitable as possible to all people involved and we should avoid rushing to conclusions um, on basically anything and that's what I try to encourage um, to make the infighting that is going to happen no matter what um, happen in a more productive and effective manner sometimes I think that like uh, I sometimes draw a line between like lefty infighting and right-wing infighting where uh, right-wing infighting uh, often ends very uh, very very um, let's see let's say painfully for the losing party um, the the right likes to say that they're not the cancel type but they totally absolutely are and you can look at the figures that they've ended up uh, like sort of discarding over the years and see where they are now and you can see that it's usually uh, career ending uh, when there's an infight in the right wing, um, you whoever wins becomes the new person and the other person gets completely and utterly destroyed. And I think that we should try to avoid being like that. I think that actually the left, surprisingly, is generally better than that, despite, uh, you know, what some some like media figures will say. But like, I think that we should try to avoid being uh, lethal to one another in our infighting and we should instead try to encourage people actually engaging with one another and growing and obviously there are going to be times where you have to draw lines and say this is unacceptable like you know but uh when it comes to like political disagreements i think that we should we should try to recognize that like part of the value of the left is that we can disagree with one another, is that there is a lot more of a liberatory focus, which means people are gonna come to different conclusions, and we should be able to uh, work together uh, to to the best of our ability to disagree uh, r rationally um, and not uh, just destroy each other for the sake of it. I hope that makes sense. I know that that's a little bit nuanced and not exactly a super clean answer, but I just think that that's how it is. Um, I've seen a lot of really toxic infighting. I've seen infighting that uh, that goes uh, really bad. I mean, 
uh, there's stuff that I would go that doesn't even consider that I don't even consider infighting anymore. Um, stuff that ends up being like explicit harassment. I myself and my partner who I mentioned before have experienced that to an extreme degree um, where I've had people obsessively um, target my platform and and uh, and and basically spend all their time trying to make sure that I can't continue or can't grow often for completely fabricated reasons um, or and I think that's a problem so I guess that's what I'll say on infighting I think it's very complicated that it's to a certain degree natural and that we should try and cultivate doing it in a way that is as productive as possible uh, when possible Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that that was very well said. Um, and so, like, if if I'm correct, like you you're observing that there is in general like a lot of infighting in comparison to the right. It's not like as inflammatory, and it is yeah. it apparently a bit more like productive on the left. Um, I think so. Generally, that, yeah. yeah. Like I, I okay. mean. I, I have kind of a unique background in that, and I'm very open about this on my channel, I grew up in an extremely right-wing environment. I was raised in a cult, um, a, a right-wing evangelical cult that was very, very extreme. And so I saw from the inside what what the way that things operate on their side of things, and I don't think that there's really any less infighting. I think humans fight with each other all the time. But the way the thing with the right is that there are uh, way more uh, severe lines of power um, and um, hierarchical like stances where uh, if you defy, you will be destroyed, cut off, you will be ousted, shunned. Um, people talk about shunning in religious communities. That's a very real thing. In the church, there was, if you disagreed with the head pastor, if you weren't ready to take out the head pastor and become the head pastor yourself, which never happened in my experience, that never resulted in that way, um, you would be destroyed, you would be ousted from the community, and you would disappear from the from the community. Uh, no, you would. It's just how it went. So, and I would... I would hope that that's not the case, except for when it's really, you know, really important on our side of things. Obviously, in cases of like extreme abuse, um, in cases of 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 you know, uh, extreme harm. Obviously, I'm. I don't believe that you should like look the other way. I would never would say that, but but yeah, I do think that um, the left already does a better job generally. But we could even do better, and we could make it more productive and uh, and. I think it could result in some, some, some serious growth as communities. So, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, um, yeah. No, that that makes perfect sense. I guess, yeah. And then, because I also want to talk about kind of your specific kind of intentions, like needs, um, regarding like your platform and kind of what you want from your audience and from other um, influencers that are more on the left. Because we can probably talk about the right a lot, but they're arguably a lot easier to to critique and and kind of dunk on and it's For maybe sure. maybe a bit yeah a bit, bit less constructive um the uh like like the reason one of the reasons why i made that video was um i was also like working on videos with about like buddhism and stuff and there was one of the you know one of the ideas of like right right livelihood which is where you kind of have some sort of agreement with you know the the profession that you've undertaken and that it's a compassionate activity in some way and i was looking at myself and how i was uh kind of conducting myself on youtube and um i mean i don't really engage in a lot of drama this is like uh the closest I'll, i, I yeah. hopefully will probably ever get but um uh, even then it's it would never really that inflammatory but at the same time i was like am i you know I'm, i i care about certain political things but i don't know if i was really genuinely making any sort of difference and i was also seeing or i was observing like um like when i would go on youtube a lot of political influencers that i would look up to most of the videos like a majority of the videos were about interpersonal conflicts or disagreements regarding uh you know views that are important and it's mm -hmm. good to have those discussions but looking at how large their platforms were and how large my platforms were i was kind of you know i was like could could there be more that we could do um yeah. and i guess that's that's why like i opened this up um and so i'm I'm kind of wondering on your end like uh how how you kind of conceptualize your own platform and your sort of like intentions with it and kind of what you would maybe wish from the audience from from other creators as well yeah um so you know, 
the way that I look at my platform ha has changed some over the years. Um, but uh, I one of the things I try to keep in mind is like the the sort of limitations. And I think like at the beginning, like the first half of your video where you were sort of talking about some of the limitations of streaming and YouTube generally was like part where I was just like, oh, I agree with you like 100% on what's being said here. Because I do think like, with very few exceptions, basically anybody who steps onto YouTube is going to be, for streaming or making videos, is going to be an entertainer first. Um, there's very, very few exceptions for that. Like, I, I was trying to list out in my mind on last night while I was, while I was like, sort of typing down my thoughts some examples. I'm like, hard journalism is one of those, and that doesn't even 100% track because there's a lot of journalists who are talking head type journalists. Um, but hard journalism, uh, like science channels that like post like videos of like weather updates and stuff like that, or like I was thinking releases. like a like Khan Academy, like the, yeah, like, like there's a the, few, yeah. well, even Khan Academy where it's like, I mean, I guess it is. It is mostly educational content, but it's it's very rare that like on this medium that you're gonna be you're gonna do you're gonna be a anything other than an entertainer first, and I don't think mm -hmm. that's necessarily a bad thing. It's just it's a role um, mm -hmm. and so I try to keep that in mind and I try to remember that that like I will talk about serious issues but at the end of the day my my role is still mostly as an entertainer um, and uh, and that that's true for a lot of the people that I'm engaging with as well um, and I, I do think that there's a lot of good things that entertainers can do for example um, I think that one of the things that YouTubers and live streamers have like a ton of, of advantage on is the ability to sort of organically attract audiences um, in a way that like a lot of other things can't. Um, people are looking for entertainment. Our lives are really stressful, like especially like I talk about America because I'm an American, like, but in America, people live really stressful lives. Uh, entertainment is kind of hard and expensive to come by increasingly. Um, and so is social type entertainment where you can also be like bonding with other people or making connections. So I think that we can use that to our advantage. And I think like community building is something that I focus on a lot. Like. Uh, how do I, you know, I, people come to my channel, they're looking to have a good time, they have a good time, they uh, are looking to meet new people and talk to those new people. How do I facilitate that in a safe and productive manner? And also, how do I encourage people to build connections that are above and beyond just being a fan of the same content? And so that's something I talk about a lot. If you ask my fans, you, they'll they'll probably tell you I talk about it too much, where I'm just like, oh, I'm always reminding my fans to like, hey, connect with each other in a real way. When you go and hang out on the Discord, go there with the intention of like, of, of recognizing that you're meeting another person and you might connect with that person and be able to build an actual friendship. Obviously, uh, you have to be careful about like the the streamer YouTuber parasocial effect, and that's why I try to correct like point people. Don't just try and like you could be a fan of my work. I obviously love that and appreciate that, and obviously this is a very interactive platform. But but I always want to be reminding people that you're here to be able to connect with other people who are interested in the same subjects. We we've all come here for the same general cloud of reasons, and you can connect with each other and build bonds that will actually make you stronger politically um, beyond the entertainment factor of my show. And I think that's something that over the years it has proven itself um, that like me starting my stream with a community focus and then continuing to, to like build that focus has been a really, in my opinion, one of the things I'm most proud of because uh, I've seen what it's done. Um, I've seen people who've been a part of my community a, a, a long time end up building their own, own entire network of friends and um, and connections that makes them and their friend like if they build an affinity group that lets them that lets them be stronger in the world that lets them advocate for themselves and take care of themselves and I'm trans I talk about trans stuff a lot and this is super important in the trans community where uh, trans people are kind of spread all over the place. Um, you know, so, uh, and some of us live in really dangerous places. So building connections like that means that you might be able to get out of a place because you have a support network now that you didn't have before. So yeah, I think that like streamers and YouTubers, even people who aren't like sort of, you know, 
uh, uh, making content for a niche for a small for a niche like me where I'm making a lot of my content is made for trans people like that's who I'm thinking about when I'm making it and like even people who aren't in that position can acknowledge this amazing community building factor and use it to do really great things and of course we as the creator ourselves can can engage in that like um, something that I I wish more uh, more content creators would do um, is like uh, is like uh, uh, contribute to direct aid, which is something I have seen people do it, and I've participated in this myself quite a lot. But and I've seen and I've done it with other creators, so it's not like no one's doing it, but they are. Like there is an ability for uh, streamers, given that we we streamers and youtubers too because youtubers also will tend to cultivate mods and you tend to have a discord these things are sort of natural to how we build our platforms anyway we can use that to be able to go okay wait there's people in our community who have needs um and maybe we can meet those needs um you know instead of just doing like a single charity run for a for a specific charity a tiltify thing or whatever um maybe we can engage in direct aid and and immediately impact people who are in need right now for whatever reason or on the next level if you're not like looking to to do you know really small scale stuff maybe there are organizations that aren't getting the attention that they need that that through these types of very organic community building that we do we can find and channel that energy into and it can make a really big difference like i know that i've seen that like uh god there's so many uh, over the years i've been a part of a bunch of these different uh, uh efforts for both direct aid and towards like hey we need to shore up um this specific cause um and i think that youtubers and and streamers have a unique ability to be able to participate in that that like legacy media has no ability to do that really um for a number of reasons uh partially because like the the mechanism by which they connect to their community is completely and utterly different um but yeah so those are i know that was a little bit like i tried to hit a couple of the questions that you asked but i hope i hope i i hope i hit those and that makes sense like i do think that that's like at least for me i see myself as like I, my job is to get on here and let people have a good time help people have a good time um while thinking about things productively while uh broadening their mind to issues that i care about and then also act as a like an enzyme or a, or a catalyst maybe that's a better word a catalyst towards getting people to connect with one another and strengthen their own networks um god i can tell you there's so many youtube channels that are purely just uh you plug in and it's just it's it's just entertainment for money. That's it. It's an exchange. You are getting entertained. I am getting money. Um, and they might have a massive community that just gets neglected. And those people don't. They enter that community and they don't build those connections. They're just there looking. I need the more entertainment. And so I don't ever want that to be the case for me. I always want people to come here and then be encouraged. Hey We all seek all kinds of stuff online, but what we need most is connection to other people use the spaces that i've built that i literally hire people on my team my mods and whatever to 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 you know to keep safe use that space to connect with each other and as a launching point for your own like bloom you know what i mean that's the way that i look at it yeah yeah no i mean everything that you expressed i, I completely agree with and also i think it reflects and, and I and I caught this like when I was watching the critique is that the way that you conduct yourself seems to be with a lot of consideration and a lot of um, even though you're saying you're just an entertainer like there is a considerable amount of, of thought and uh, like awareness of, of accountability and and uh, responsibility with having an audience at all in this day and age um, yeah. and that's also why I reached out to you is because it was you. you know it was, I found it particularly impressive and I also think that like what you touched on at the end there um, and I wish I learned about this before and I'm, I'm still kind of mulling over it, but are you like, do you know, like, um, like Sartre's like, like Jean-Paul Sartre, like the, mm -hmm. like the existentialist, um, his like more Marxist thought, because I never really like looked into this too much. I didn't, I, I'm not um, super familiar with it, honestly. He, uh, he talks about, um, it's, um, this idea of seriality. So he talks about like, like 
Praxis is basically we're all in kind of a social environment and we're striving towards certain things and the actions we make kind of leave leave marks and um, because these social environments are shared like shared social spaces um, usually the the actions that we're undertaking are out of a motivation of, of scarcity mm -hmm. um, and that doesn't just mean like in terms of money but it can mean in terms of like food or in terms of, uh, you know, cultural capital, uh, you know, literary prizes or something. YouTube, I would say probably even more than money, it's, it's attention is yeah. there's a scarcity of attention where we're kind of um, fixated on how can I get a certain amount of attention. And his idea of seriality is where there's a collective group of people that are all kind of there. They sometimes look like they're working together, but they're actually all working out of kind of a scarcity mentality of like, I need to get my, yeah. Uh, thing I need to get specifically my thing and and he was writing about this in a time where he saw a lot of leftist movements springing uh, up but there was a lot there was a lot of infighting there was a lot of uh, there wasn't like a general collective sense of like the of, of like working class politics basically um and that's where he saw kind of this notion of seriality of, of people kind of just getting their own even though they're advocating for you know, more uh, collective action, like mm -hmm. on the on the surface, and I was like, that was like, that's a, that was pr that's a more, at least for me, an accurate way to to describe maybe my own grievance with like when we're talking about like channels that are literally just entertainment or yeah. um, channels that are mostly involving drama and stuff like that. But he also offers this idea of group praxis, which is I, I think it reflects what you were talking about, um, where it is communities of people it's community building and groups of people and there's there's still disagreements within it but they mm -hmm. kind of keep their eye on the prize where they know that those disagreements are supposed to burn out some sort of further truth or some sort of further action that could be more constructive because at the end of the day they all agree on something and i guess yeah. I'm, I'm curious what you think of like uh, this sort of my probably not great summary of Sarch's like thought but um no, if, it, mean, if it kind I, of aligns with i think it, it totally makes sense to me and i mean i think that is one of the things that um that like youtube broadly suffers from like that concept of serialization like i probably would have described that like i probably would have used different words if i was like because I've talked about how people get siloed off and how it's kind of like YouTubers are contractors like and people are able to fairly re easily recognize. I feel like on the left and even among liberals, people are able to recognize like, OK, Uber drivers, they don't really talk to other Uber drivers very often outside of like maybe they connect on the Internet. But there's no workplace that all the Uber drivers go to. Um, and so like to draw an analogy to like labor organizing like uh, in the uber world it's a huge advantage to uber that none of their employees ever have a share a lunch together or anything like that that the, it's an app that speaks to each one individually and youtube is a lot like this now um youtubers aren't uh like technically as uh as as like aggressively like separated in that way but the structure is very similar we are uh sort of um, sometimes working towards the same end, but without any bridges between us. And I do think that there's a lot of value in, in changing that. I think that there's value in people building real connections, real social connections, um, because I think that people like will think twice when they're engaging with another person that they have a connection to um not even just friends but just like we all can acknowledge that like people are weird on the internet partially because they see a screen and not a human even though there is a human on the other end the illusion messes with their empathetic centers uh, and I think that's going to happen to all of us. And I think it can lead to an effect where, like, on a political level, there's a kind of, like, uh, uh, there's a, a uh, fragmentation that happens that's really not necessary. And I don't think that, I don't think I could, I, I don't think you could ever build bridges between every person who's interested in talking about lefty politics on the internet. But more, I think, would lead, pe would lead to a general environment where, uh, uh, where like sort of pointless uh and cruel farming of of one another uh to our to like what end to like a personal enrichment maybe a short-term personal enrichment maybe like where that thing is less common um so yeah i i actually think that's a pretty interesting concept that you've brought up and 
yeah, I mean, uh, I, I, I haven't read anything on it, so I can't speak to like how, how it like holds up on a philosophical level beyond this, but it's certainly something that I think would be, you know, is, is worth reflecting on. Like the fact that like a lot of us have um, vaguely similar political goals, um, but they're un it's unrefined by the fact that there's not a whole lot of connections, and yet there's an expected collection connection. Um, an example of this is like how um, how sometimes bread tube is talked about as its own thing. Like I don't know how familiar you are with the conversation around bread tube, but like a lot of the creators that are in bread tube didn't like sit down and say we're bread tube now. They were just like, it was like labeled onto them and they found themselves like we're all standing in a room now and everybody talks about us like we're a collective, even though we might not actually even know each other. Um, and uh, I think that that's, that can be an upsetting experience that's sometimes unavoidable um, because of the way that the internet and people have genre brain and they're like looking to create a genre and to create connections. But like we can kind of uh, undermine that that uncontrollable nature by actually just building connections with each other that are that are existent that aren't just like a genre consumer label like hey here's a bunch of people who are working together and doing something here's some people who have talked to each other like we're doing right now and uh, have actually gone somewhere with it and and built something uh, and and started to build bridges in one way and I don't know I I think that's really important and you know, I'm not perfect. I've had my fair share of conflicts online. Uh, I genuinely have done my best to not like initiate them for no good reason. Um, and I really, really uh, don't like drama farming. It doesn't make me feel good. I don't think it makes anybody feel good. Um, like uh, that, I have had a couple of big streams this year, specifically talking about that. Earlier this year, I had a pretty, one of my bigger streams was called a sky burial for the Twitter left. And it was fairly dramatic. I did kind of a, made a big show of it and did like a funeral, basically, where I was talking about how like the Twitter left, partially because of the takeover of Elon Musk, has just completely devolved into nothingness. And on Twitter, um, there was a point where there was a lot of like leftist discussion happening on Twitter, and it's completely been hijacked. It's just, it's trash, complete and utter trash now. And so we basically had a big stream talking about that and how like so much of it has turned into this horrible uh, drama farming that makes everybody feel bad and it doesn't actually lead. It might get you a big stream uh, to, to talk about an issue that people are like, oh my God, did you hear what happened? But it doesn't last. It actually fades out and then you find yourself struggling to claw back that attention again because you can never reach that high. So it's not a super sustainable path, um, especially because there's only so many bridges that can be burned before everyone's alone again. And yeah, I, I really think that, uh, yeah, I really think that like, this idea of building, uh, building like like at least some level of connection, so people can go, wow, are we working together on this? Or maybe we're not, but that's okay. And you know, maybe there'll be two groups of people who are connected to each other, and this one bridge won't work out. But at least there's there's an attempt being made. At least there's some connections that are being forged, and people are starting to actually make a world instead of just a bunch of sticks that have been stuck into the mud in a particular direction with no knowledge really of one another, except when you want to go smack one or whatever. Like, I think that's not productive at all. Yeah. Yeah. No, that. Uh... I, I once again agree with with everything that you you've stated i i i think that was also one of the kind of realizations i had like was just everybody there's so many people online that are very articulate very educated and have that talent to capture attention and if it was pooled together and it doesn't mean that they all have to agree specifically on the same thing but if they agree on at least enough things that that would lead to actually some more actionable steps and like also like better discourse and and but it you, it does have to come from that like um genuine discussion like yeah. genuine like people actually like listening to each other not in like the sort of right wing way of like the free marketplace of ideas like but but you know challenging ideas and not letting your ego get too involved and and i think the, the major critique of that video that I, I was trying to or the the major point in the video i was trying to kind of make and i don't think i communicated properly was uh the kind of 
the closeness of ego and that idea of seriality uh-huh. and kind of people becoming too committed to their own specific beliefs and ideas not because they're necessarily good or they're necessarily stable but because like their platform is attached to that idea of stability and if they're challenged yeah. then that could like ruin their their ability to capture attention or their ability to you know make money or yeah. or anything which yeah so it's, and i do think that's it, like a yeah. completely like the that's a just an unequivocally true thing about all youtubers that i don't know how that can change at the moment i haven't been able to figure it out because to be honest uh as far as from like a uh making a living perspective youtube's kind of got the major upper hand and i don't know how we fix it um like some people I this was something there was a a, a cycle of discourse that has returned it's kind of hasn't happened in a while but it was on Twitch mostly back when I was on Twitch in Twitch politics which doesn't really exist anymore I mean the literally the category doesn't exist anymore but um back when Twitch politics was a thing there was this concept of like should streamers form a union and I kept going Mm. like people would talk about it for hours without realizing that you can't unionize in the same way you're a contractor there's no union there's no laws that allow you to be able to create a union in the traditional sense you could do like a wildcat strike but that's like a totally different that's a totally different discussion than unionizing um and so the the livelihood thing does put us at a at a spot where it's like like there's always going to be that risk all, like as far as I can tell for the for now until a long time maybe things like maybe groups like nebula or something like that can can help alleviate that um, I think that probably you could make some like um, like I don't know like multi-channel networks or something that are like leftist flavored they're still not gonna be like co-ops because that doesn't just is, isn't gonna work most of the time but you can build some stuff that will uh, lead to more resilience but there is always the risk because of the the very default of the platform that that like people's livelihoods are staked on their channel success that there's always a a perverse incentive there and it is hard to overcome i think we just have to get as creative as possible and recognize it as like a danger of the playing field you know it's like this is the just like there's risks in any industry for like what could threaten the ability for good things to happen whether it's unionizing or whatever that is one of the threats in our industry is that like um people end up like because of the way it's structured it's generally one person or a brand that is at the center of a channel and if things go bad for that it could really ruin somebody's life it could make it so that they like and they have their survival staked on that and you know that that does put a certain limit on on what can be done with the platform but i don't think that it's like a total wash uh i just think it's something we have to grapple with and acknowledge and work around and get as creative as possible to kind of figure out how we can uh you know uh you know find eke out every little advantage that we can get within a system that's kind of hostile to us um yeah (sighs) but it's yeah no oh i wanted to ask Um, you something with regard to your your video so i don't know um so I, I've seen some other people's reactions to your video, and uh, I've seen some that were, you know, fairly good faith, and I've seen some that were significantly more aggressive or, like, that felt a little more defensive. Um, and, uh, uh, did like, are, are you... I assume you probably are. I don't want to be, like... I don't want to sound like I'm being rude or anything. But are you familiar with, like, the 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 video essayist versus streamer beef that exists okay so you're oh yeah yeah i was gonna say like i think that i think that in some ways in some ways fairly and in some ways unfairly your video kind of uh kind of touched on some of those nerves and may have activated them in some people because i will say i've seen a lot of these videos uh for a number of reasons partially because uh like it's my people are talking about what i do and i'm kind of interested in that and it's usually from creators that whose work i generally like that they're saying this stuff and so i'm like what do they have to say what do they think about what i'm doing you know what i mean or whether they talk about me directly which has happened or whether they don't um but uh yeah yours in my opinion was on the much better end uh uh, as far as as uh, but i've definitely seen some that have been very very unproductive and very uh i understand why some people react harshly to the, like the that 
videos that 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 ride on those like i said that like touch those nerves or synapses or whatever you want to talk about like i can understand to a certain degree why people are like uh here it comes again you know what i mean because i've seen some that are like oof that's a little yeah they're they're mm -hmm. yeah. um no there i mean there it was perhaps a little bit uh deliberately packaged to mm. to look like that um yeah. because one of the if i do have one gripe with the uh streaming mm -hmm flat like like streamers is not all content is uh really like uh, digested properly in the form of constant pauses and yeah. uh in clips um it is better to sometimes sit on an idea or to see an argument build so a part of me was was kind of thinking if i you know presented in a certain way um you know, maybe a few of these people would be, uh, you know, they would they would do the thing that I kind of expected them to do, which is what happened. You you did not overall. Like I would say that your your critique was a, was an extremely good faith. Um, it's how I think most streamers probably should engage with, especially longer form content. But also on the whole, the the video. I don't actually believe in like that antagonism between debate bro and video essayists. Like yeah, I think both I, of I them are really... so like. That, and and I, I included uh, like examples in the video of, of specific video essays that I'm also not a huge fan of that that work on that kind of antagonism because uh -huh. it's it's you know debate bros are in or or streamers are inherently like it's 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 a very vitriolic and like passionate uh, kind of uh, like pathos and then yeah. and then video essayists are this inherently um kind of superiority complex like a uh, pretentious like pathos and it's just like obviously these two groups are gonna like but they're really not that different like i was my my gripe was with let's back up and look at both of them and the ecosystem that they're working within yeah. which are as you said these very large platforms that have the upper hand and how much are we actually making a difference yeah. and it was to the it was addressed to the audience because because the audience can get wrapped up in those antagonisms. They don't For really sure. realize oh, that big time. overall big it's time. kind of the it's kind of the same. Uh, I always my approach to that is always the uh, is always to be like the Green Goblin. We're not so different, you and I. Whenever <laughs> I uh, whenever I encounter that, because I really don't like I I do think that there's stylistic differences, but uh, when you talk about like a lefty streamer versus a lefty video essayist they're more or less doing the same thing for different types of people. It's both like uh, digesting info, um, at, you know, sort of turning it over and making it make sense, uh, trying to dive into it, and then also it, trying to equip the audience with, like, tools to take that information elsewhere. Um, mm -hmm. You know, obviously there are, like, pretty much every, you know, every video essay is in some form, like, I, I have some information I want to share with you so that you can think about it and it can hopefully enrich your life in one way or another. That's also what streamers are mostly doing, too, especially politically-minded streamers. Um, it's kind of, like, like the thing so we're all kind of engaging it's just there's stylistic differences it's kind of funny to me too how the um the the fight uh or the lines there have have shifted over the years because like I, again i've been i've been streaming for almost four years now and it was a very different conversation uh at the beginning at the beginning it was there was a lot more focus on debate bros was the term that everybody liked to throw around the the there was it was the video essays versus the debate bros and then now it's kind of like a streamer thing more broadly and also there's a lot less video essays who are like in it who are in the fight anymore and and also there's less streamers who are in it also partially i don't know if that's just because it's like it's become more of like a hatfields and mccoys type situation where it's like the lines have gotten dug in really deep um sometimes i don't think it's possible to like to like bridge the gap uh i've i've definitely tried at times uh sometimes with some people i've had a lot of success with other people i don't know what the hell what the hell's going on and i can't fully get into that mindset uh i think there are uh i don't know it's it's we it's weird to me because i i sometimes i feel like it's just uh it's like it's like art snobbery that has been like 
wrapped into a, a, like a political package where it's like, it's actually about politics, guys. It's not because I think it's easier to react to content live and talk to your chat or, you know, it's, 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 uh, or, or whatever, or the opposite, which is like, oh, it's so easy to, to read a script or whatever. It's like, come on, like, you no, know, that's not true. I've like, like, I don't know, people get, but I do, I do see that squeak out sometimes where I'm like, what's this really about? Is this, are you just mad about differences in the format? Is this like art snobbery that's been, like I said, wrapped in politics? I don't know, I find it interesting. I, uh, uh, I, I, I am glad personally that like your video uh, approached it so like ap approached it so much like differently than a lot of them do. Um, like I felt like um, when you brought up specific people, I really didn't feel like there was like a whole like you had a whole lot of vitriol towards them. Um, like in uh, my could you could you remind me of who? Like, I think you brought, brought up, up Hassan and Vosh, I think, were the main ones that I remember on the streamer uh, side. But I don't they, but I, I they think were, you just played their videos mostly. Like, yeah, they were just used because, you know, with my editor, it was like, well, there's no stock footage of leftist uh, content or content creators or leftist streamers. So you do have to use certain people. Um, and I mean, in the thumbnail, it's like, well, they're like kind of large, like yeah. they are kind of the large like faces of that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I never, not once did I actually utter, uh, at least I think so, utter any any actually specific yeah. content creator's name, which made the reactions kind of, I don't know, a little bit funny, but... Yeah, I mean, I think some people, like, I do think that there's, like, if you put someone's face on something, they can assume that the message is directed at them because it's their mm. face on it, you know what I mean? Even if it's, like, and sometimes that can be, like, doubly so because it can, I think it can sometimes come off as, like, you won't say my name, but you'll use my face and you're actually talking about me, but you just don't want to, like... Like I and I don't think that's a hundred percent accurate. I don't think it's fair to jump to that conclusion. But I also kind of understand where people are coming from, because um, mm -hmm. it's like I mean I know I would be like, why is my face on something? <laughs> I've been like, yeah, oh yeah. my god, there's been uh, there's been a phenomenon in in po politics streaming spaces at at points in history where I've gone to to like to like the the politics browser this is back when it existed on twitch and i've seen my face up on like four different people's streams and just gone oh <laughs> what's going on <laughs> did i say yeah, something yeah, that would scare me offensive like, yeah. or like did, what did i do and it's just like oh man it can be a little bit of a it can be a little bit of a trip so um, that's a fair point that yeah. that is a fair point the I, I i definitely didn't consider it to be that provocative but i mean who else would I be talking about at the same yeah. time? But also, I think my actual arguments weren't really... Every time there was a, a critique of how influencers operate, I tried to make it... And I, I think I should have hammered this home more. I was also incorporating myself in that critique, and I was also saying this isn't really necessarily an individual issue because people have different motives and everything. It's it's a yeah. systemic issue that there's there's inherently going to be some issue in terms of revolutionary potential operating online under these like large companies and platforms yeah. that like the, it's not it's none of these people's fault like they are just you know some of them are trying their best some of them might be bad actors but uh um but i i you know i can see the optics uh for sure yeah and uh, i do uh when you talk about like revolutionary potential like I find that to be such a difficult conversation, uh, like to be able to pull apart because, um, first of all, like, and this is me personally, I don't really believe in a single, like the revolution. Um, like, I don't know that there will ever be a single incident like that. Um, like I, I think that I do think sometimes certain, and, and I think certain factions are more prone to this than others, um, online. I think. Uh, certain types of 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 Marxists, um, uh, Marxist Leninists are one who I think have a bit of a millenarian view um, on like they're like it's almost like the rapture, like it's gonna happen. Like oh, we're waiting for the day that it happens, and it's gonna happen one day. We're gonna hear the trumpets blaring, and then communism is gonna come, and we have to be ready for that, or else we'll be left behind, or something. And I try to avoid that because I don't really. That's not really how I think things unfold in history. I don't know that there are single events. I think that there's like the cumulative events that are 
um, all kinds of micro revolutions that add up and then when you zoom way out and you're looking at the past you see them all as like one thing but if you were to zoom back in there's a bunch of different things happening at once that raise the temperature and cause a change to happen and uh, so I don't know if there's uh, like you know I, but but in that I do think that like I do think there's a lot of good that can be done by channels but also like you mentioned, the limitations are real. Um, and I think we do ourselves a benefit to like be real about our limitations and also to recognize like um, that like this is something I've encountered like not to be a, a defender of the content creators, you know I mean like we're, we're, we're mostly artists and stuff like that, like artisty types. Um, but like, Sometimes I feel like there's a little bit of a there's like too high expectations put um by some people on like what a YouTuber is supposed to be able to do about things. And I'm not saying that's like, you know, oh, you know, get off my ass about everything, don't criticize me. But also, it's kind of crazy sometimes the way that I see people talk on social media. This is especially common on Twitter where things get out of really out of hand in my opinion, but where people look at a creator and it's like they want um it's like they want that person to be uh, like a like a revolutionary leader in and of themselves, and I'm like, that's just not possible. Like you're mm -hmm. you're projecting something onto somebody who can't be that. Um, and some of this is like there are people who try to sell themselves as this. Um, I can think of some figures who like I think are doing harm. I I would criticize that on, on most fronts, like people who are trying to like sell themselves as the answer, you know? Um, there are some people that like grifter types that are like literally trying to like bang home this idea that like, it's through my movement, subscribe to my Patreon to join the world revolution type thing, where I find that kind of despicable. But I do think it goes mm -hmm. the other way sometimes where there are people who are yearning for a change and they see people talking about topics that are connected to that and that are important to that and they want that person, that face, to be the one that does it. And it's like, that's not how it works. That's That that can't be how it works. Like, um, And I've certainly felt that pressure at times. I, I've talked about, um, you know, uh, there's been a lot of discourse over the years about, um, like in the trans community about like, trans figures who raised who rise to a level of prominence and then f experience like an incredible amount of hostility from certain aspects of the community sometimes to the point where it's like life destroying and i think that's kind of a similar effect where it's like um there is so much desperation in the world and there's so much pain that like when you see someone gain a type of success it's perceived as the success the that is you have the power to you have the you're holding the the chaos emerald that could start the revolution but we're not and you have to kind of remember that even the the greatest of us is usually at the end of the day um, just someone who's passionate and talking to the camera in their studio or bedroom, <laughs> like we only have so much power. As much as uh, as much as as much fun as we might have, like um, yeah, and like and I feel like this applies even beyond uh, just streamers and to other types of of stuff. But like it's especially true for streamers and YouTubers um, of the political bent, where it's like you know you're talking about this stuff a lot, and it can create the illusion that like. Uh, that a movement hinges on a single person, but I just don't know if it does. And I think that, like, if we remember that, it might bring down some of the hostilities just a little bit. And also make clear the people who are kind of, like, lying to your face. Because there are people that do that. Like I said, I mean, like, I grew up in a cult. I'm very familiar with, like, through my life as a result of living my life and escaping that environment. I've become very attentive to, like, cult leader type behavior. Um, and that shit definitely exists online. It absolutely exists where people are just like, yeah, I am your answer. I am your God. Like, give me your money because I'll save you. And they never do. They can't. They're just a person. So, yeah. Hope that makes sense. No, that, that made perfect sense. Like, uh, I, yeah, also, I, I, I do see you're, you're kind of, uh, I, I have a sort of projection of exactly where the the next 
two videos probably I do on this land, and you've mm -hmm. kind of already almost like spoiled it a little bit, like my own actual Thanks. opinion there. But but I think we're very much on on the same wavelength there. Um, yeah. And I unfortunately I do have to go. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. But I, I I would I would also like uh, would be open to like a future discussion. Like yeah, this was extremely I'm sorry that the and, scheduling and was like kind of weird. I miss I just blanked while I was reading your email and like oh, it's okay. I, we could have had more time. But um, this has been a great convo so far. And yeah, I'm totally open to it. And um, I, you mentioned you were going to talk to some other like streamers and creators in <laughs> the space, which is also really exciting. I'd be looking looking forward to that. Um, but yeah, if you ever want to talk again, like, um, we can, we can set up another time because I'd love to talk about this and other topics more. Um, maybe after yeah. your other videos come out, we could talk again. That might be really exciting. Yeah, cool. that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'd be totally down. Um, um yeah, it was super nice to meet you. Um, yeah. likewise, uh, right. I felt like this yeah. was awesome. Have a, have a wonderful yeah, yeah, day. Totally. Sorry to run it up you against too. the clock so tight. No, <laughs> no, no worries. Take care. Bye, Bye. for now. Hey, that was a great conversation. Uh, unfortunately, we had. Oh, hold on. Did my sound go? Okay, there we go. That was a uh, that was a a a great conversation. I'm, I'm sorry I had to come to an end, but um, but yeah, that was uh, we ran up against the time a little bit. Um, but uh, I enjoyed that. By the way, uh, thank you.